Chair. Thank you, Kathleen. Function. Um, thanks, last time, Corla. Is it 15 minutes that we have? Yeah. Okay, so it's um, seven um, sharing time with Deputy O'Reilly and Deputy Quayle on seven, Great. three and five. Great. Thanks. Um, first of all, Minister, I want to thank you for the acknowledgement of uh, my work in this area, because as you know, it's something that I consistently raise and an area that I feel very strongly and very passionate about. And I also want to welcome your your honesty and frankness and it was actually it's sort of refreshing to see a minister go off script and you know speak from their own experience about the issue um but you know we that will have to be matched with actions um but i do welcome that and i think that's um a positive development and a welcome one. Um, I'd also like to just state for the record that we are supporting the Fianna Fáil motion and thank um, it's Deputy Byrne, Deputy Margaret Murphy O'Mahony as well for bringing this forward. On the 2nd of April this year, as people will be aware, myself and Deputy O'Quailon uh, tabled a private member's motion to mark World Autism Awareness Day, which called for the development of an autism empowerment strategy in Ireland. This was unanimously supported, and a key component of that bill was acknowledging the complete inequity that currently exists in our education system for autistic children and the fact that we have created this two-tier system which is um, so many children have fallen through the cracks and continuously fall through the cracks as a result of this and um, just to remind the house and maybe minister as well that we're still waiting on the establishment of this autism committee and it's something that we will obviously continue to raise um, we support the measures in the motion and we feel they must be acted on in order to tackle the challenges embedded in our education system which children with additional needs face. Without appropriate training, how can teachers enter a classroom confidently and teach all children equally? Trainee teachers are consistently saying that they do not feel prepared with adequate skill skills for teaching children with additional needs and this should never be the case. And a recent NCSE public consultation stated that there was a lot of concern about the level of training and knowledge of teachers working with students with ASD as they require knowledgeable and experienced teachers. And that there was great concern about non-experienced teachers being given special classes and resource teaching hours and the practice in some, particularly in the post-primary sector, where resource teaching hours were used to fill subject teacher timetables, which obviously is totally unacceptable. Um, so we fully support um, the, the recommendations of that recent NCSE report that an ongoing programme of continuous professional development should be designed and delivered for principals and deputy principals to focus on providing leadership for the education of students with special educational needs in schools. And it's been you know, spoken about um, the, the recent Education Admissions to School Act 2018, and, and I, I do understand where you're coming from in relation to that, Minister, but I think rather than having an approach of punishing schools that are not implementing this, although I have to say that is my instinct on many occasions when I see some of the situations that parents and students are facing and the complete sort of lack of empathy that certain schools have, but maybe if there was a system of rewarding the schools that are um, examples and that are you know, out on their own in relation to this and that really go above and beyond and that strive to be a good example, maybe other schools would then come on board if they realised that, uh, you know, that there was a benefit in it for them as well. It's unfortunate to have to say that, but sometimes that's um, the reality of the situation because currently we're not seeing enough speed in relation to the amount of ASD classes that are needed in order to meet the demand and children are being left at home and left behind and I just think that you know as I said I raise this on a regular basis just again in the last two days we saw figures from my own constituency in Carlow and Kilkenny which show uh, the, a lot of children waiting on home tuition which would indicate there isn't an ASD class for them and I just think for those children in terms of the social aspects, in terms of seeing brothers or sisters going off to school, their friends going out to school, how do you even explain that to your child as a parent? And it's, it's not fair and it's not right and I don't care how often I have to say it in here, we have created a two-tier system and we have nearly accepted as a society that children with additional needs should just be happy to wait and their parents should be happy to wait and battle for everything and fair enough if you get it, even if it's October or November and the school year has started, they should be grateful for and like that's, we just need to change that, that attitude completely. I want to briefly comment on today's announcement that the rehabilitative training allowance, which is worth €31.80 Euro a week per student, is to be scrapped from this September for new entrants. Um, I just 
this beggar's belief, to be honest, and I can't understand how anybody could stand over this type of a move. And also the, the, the comments by the HSC in relation to this, where they said this decision will bring equity to all persons attending HSC-funded adult day services and will be in line with mainstream vocational training services, and that new entrants to training after September 1st will not receive the allowance and they say then they will not be effective if they'd never received the allowance. But sure, obviously, if people know that allowance is there, they've factored that in, and it's been proven time and time again that there is a cost if you're living with an additional need or a disability. Even if you look at our public transport system and how much uh, you know, people can't even access that um, if you have an additional need or a disability. So uh, how can they even try and make a comment like that? To me, it just is unbelievable. Um, so I would ask... Um, that you would look at this, and I know it may not directly fall within your, in re, your, within your remit, to be fair to you, but you know we are a minister in government, and I would ask that you look at this and bring the message back, and that this hopefully um, can be reversed, because it will create a financial inequity among school leavers with disabilities, and has been described to you as, as a slap in the face for school leavers with disabilities who are entering training this September. Adult learning improves health, and when well-being, equality of access to education is vital for health equality and life outcomes and supports for adult learning are an investment, not a cost. Um, I also just really briefly want to mention the issue of the reduced timetables. Uh, this to me just, I mean everybody I'm sure will agree and I think in fairness you probably agree yourself Minister, it's not acceptable at all where there is difficulties or struggles. It's, it's not right to nearly punish a student by saying you can only come into class from maybe 10 until 12. And in a lot of these situations, you have children leaving early or coming in late, and straight away then they're labelled or seen as, well, what's the issue with that child, or why are they always in late? They have then a fear of going into school, they don't want to go into school. It creates so many issues. There has to be a much better approach of dealing with that and maybe looking at working with um, NEPs and CAMs to, to address issues in relation to that as well. But just to say, again, I do welcome your comments and I do think you have a genuine interest in this. I think I've said that before and we will be supporting the motion. Kermagat.